What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Movie Raise. You know that feeling when you're watching a really good movie but you can't help but feel frustrated about a character? That feeling when you think this would be the best movie ever if it weren't for that character. Right, here are 10 characters who almost ruined perfectly good movies. Starting off with number 10, Carrie from Four Weddings and a Funeral. If you haven't watched this movie yet, it's basically about Charles and Carrie meeting at a wedding. Their paths continue to cross over four weddings and a funeral, which makes Charles believe they are intended to be together. Even if their timing is always incorrect, but how did Carrie ruin this perfectly good movie? Although it is an amusing and even touching film, many people aren't sure why they made the most unlikable love interest Carrie of all time. Carrie is seen as an obnoxious and self-centered woman that is always leading Charles' character on. Carrie isn't a decent female love interest since aside from her appearances, she doesn't have much going for her. And even if this is technically a romance movie, I wish they didn't end up together at the end of the movie. It is beyond a reason why Charles would marry Carrie, the girl who divorced a few months after pushing him away and he then decides to attend his first wedding to confess her emotions for him. It just doesn't make any sense. Number 9 is Anesthesia Steele from Fifty Shades of Grey. Dakota Johnson, I love you, but not Anesthesia Steele. It is undeniable that the story of Fifty Shades of Grey is great, but I can't say the same for Anna. To be putting it simply, she is a dislikable character. Her personality lacks depth and complexity, and there isn't anything interesting nor important about her. Anna claims to love reading, but aside from when Christina, the boyfriend who took her virginity, offers her a gift, she exhibits no sign of actually having a brain. Anna spends the whole series agonizing with her sexuality and Christian. She seems to be a feminist, but she has strange notions about what that entails. This allegedly entails refusing money and other expensive gifts from her wealthy boyfriend in order to establish some type of I am woman hear me scream independence, which can be argued as a parody of genuine feminism. This girl does not eat. She simply doesn't even appear to appreciate food despite Christian's parade of delectable treats right in front of her. At the end of the series, I'm still quite not sure how she ended up with a billionaire who is quite smart and intelligent. Number 8 is Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King. The movie that shaped our childhood is ruined by these two characters and is honestly such a shame. I don't know about you all, but if I were in Simba's position wherein I was exiled with no way back home and convinced that I had just indirectly murdered my own father and having to deal with Timon and Pumbaa telling me not to worry and comparing my situation to Pumbaa's farting problem, I'd be annoyed and would try to get away from them. Number 7 is Julianne Potter from My Best Friend's Wedding. Julianne Potter is a narcissistic person. When you meet Julianne, her narcissism isn't immediately apparent. She comes off as a confident, culinary critic. Her narcissism, however, intensifies with each beat of the video she rationalizes the end of a marriage. She can do these dreadful things because Michael has always been in love with her. She was rude and cruel, attempting to destroy her best friend's life simply because she was jealous of his impending marriage. I had a hard time watching the movie because I despised her character so much. Coming in at number 6 is Kevin McAllister's entire family in Home Alone. When Home Alone originally came out in theaters two and a half decades ago, it appeared to be the ideal family Christmas film. However, over decades and dozens of viewings, it becomes clear that something is amiss with the McAllisters. Not only do they bicker like middle schoolers, it is also somehow that they don't cross their mind to not leave their smallest child alone in strange places. Like, who does that? Smash that like button if you haven't done it already. Number 5. Might be a bit controversial, but yeah, Loki from the Marvel Universe. It irritates me that they continue to portray him as morally ambiguous when he has repeatedly demonstrated that he is absolutely prepared to slaughter millions of innocent people in order to obtain more power. I believe that repeating that, yeah, he's done some pretty bad things, but he's truly got a nice heart deep down stereotype is one of the romantic notions that keeps individuals in abusive relationships, although this characteristic of his is what makes some people love him more. This list wouldn't be complete without Bella 
Bella Swan from Twilight. Yeah, the film that we collectively hate but love at the same time. It's difficult to think Bella was only 17 years old when Twilight began. She met Edward Cullen and immediately recognized him as her soulmate. She doesn't question whether she's too young to recognize him as the one. Throughout the tale, Bella takes important life decisions well beyond her adolescent, deciding to become a vampire and give up her mortality at the age of 17. Might I also say that she has met the Cullens and starts ditching her friends? Bella is also quite selfish with how she led Jacob on. Jacob certainly adored Bella, but she didn't feel the same way. Regardless, she lured him along and she continued to do so in Eclipse. She even gave him a kiss, and of course the infamous line, you nickname my daughter after the Loch Ness monster. No, Bella, I can never forgive you for that cringe-worthy line. Number 3 is Mark from Love Actually. Love Actually is a good film that I enjoyed watching a bit. There is one character there, though, that puts me in the test and that is Mark. To put it simply, he was such a bully to Kiara Knightley's character and then confessed his love for her despite her being married to his best friend, which is really questionable and disgusting to even think about. That being cruel to someone you like nonsense isn't it, Mark, and how he called Juliet fatso while confessing his love for her? No thank you. Number 2 is another controversial character, Ron Weasley. He always seems to be squabbling. He abandons the others when they desperately need him. He lacks maturity of Harry and Hermione, and he is always led by impulse rather than rational thought. Ron is the least likable of the three, yet that is the part of his personality. He's under a lot of stress, he isn't as mature, sensible, or brilliant as the others, but that is the purpose of his persona. He shows us how an ordinary person would react, and that is why, although he isn't exactly likable, he's adored by many. Number one spot belongs to Frodo Baggins from The Lord of the Rings. Sometimes the main character isn't the best character and this applies to The Lord of the Rings. Needless to say, the main character, Frodo, is the series' most annoying character. He may have carried the ring, but his uselessness puts him in utter frustrating events that ends up with him having to be saved by everyone else. It seems like he couldn't fend for himself. He utterly disregards Gandalf's advice and declares that we shall proceed through the mines, putting everyone in danger. He's always whining or slowing everyone down. Smash that subscribe button and bring that notification bell. Samwise must watch after Frodo while also embarking on this insane expedition and dealing with all of Frodo's troubles before carrying him up to the mountain. Then at the end, everyone acts as if Frodo is the greatest hero ever. No, he was by far the worst of the hobbits in the trilogy. Liked what you saw? Feel free to click on that like and subscribe button because we got a lot more in store for you. These characters definitely have me frustrated and may be annoyed watching the movies they are into. What do you think of them? Leave a comment down below. We'll see you in the next video.